I'm tending to teach to this side, so I'm really aware that there's a, there's a whole group out there that uh, I guess it's because it's like that, is it? So I must be um, made more aware of that. But um, we're going to. I'm going to begin by getting um, some information over to you about um, the um, two diverse opinions concerning um, technology. And once we've done that, then we can get that out of the way and we can get on with the nuts and bolts of, uh, of talking about what we do. Um, but um, Neil Postman um, wrote in the 60s that technopoly is a state of culture and mind and if deified will result in a new social order and disillusion of traditional beliefs. Control production will result in information breakdown. So you can see that people were very fearful uh, in, in those days of, of, um, of having anything to do with technology. And he's very influential, was, um, person in terms of uh, teaching as a subversive activity. But Lauriard, um, on the other hand, suggests that collaborative technologies offer new ways of supporting learning and best ways of creating new ideas by building a pedagogical framework to deliver genuinely enhanced learning experiences. We prefer that, don't we? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, we, having looked at that, if there's anything that you would like to check up on, uh, we have the, um, the references at the end, and you can have a look at that and uh, look at Postman and Laureate. Yep. But uh, we'll go quickly on, I think. Yep. We just didn't want to <coughs> talk much about uh, theory. That, that was more or less it. And now we'll tell you... Uh, who we are, uh, how our cooperation and our work began, and also then we will concentrate on video conferencing and all other activities that are connected to the programs or courses that we are involved in. So I'll just quickly go to uh, presenting uh, my institution, it is Masaryk University, it's the second largest university in the Czech Republic, it's got something like um, 50,000 students, and <coughs> that's why our language centre uh, is the, the largest in the country. We have almost 9,000 uh, students per term, almost well, more or less uh, 100 uh, staff members. We teach uh, English, French, uh, German, Spanish, Russian, Latin and Czech for foreigners and we're involved in activities of course teaching. In research we specialize in these <coughs> innovations, well uh, use of ICT, uh, testing and uh, European language portfolio and then well we take part in a lot of projects uh, some of them we're going to talk about. Uh, right. Abba Iswith or Abba. I downloaded this. Um, Abba Iswith University is located by the sea in one of three um, in, in one in three residents stay from the university. They come, they like it, they stay. The area has beautiful coastlines, beaches and mountains, as well as a lively social scene. Within 130, uh, 130 years' experience and internationally renowned research facilities, Aberystwyth is a great choice if you are serious about study and you don't mind living two and a half hours from civilization. <laughs> Our language centre is very small, even smaller since we now no longer do in-sessionals, but we concentrate on pre-university uh, pre courses. Um, the students in our classes are divided by language level and by special subject level, depending on their intention to go to um, uh, graduate or undergraduate courses. That's us. Okay, and if you uh, want to know how we got together, well, it was through the uh, Erasmus <coughs> program, European program. First, uh, our students started to go to Aberystwyth and Aberystwyth students to Brno. Uh, <coughs> the next year, teaching mobility started, and because we watched what the other teachers were doing, we were helping with uh, feedback and uh, also, well, of course, did a lot of teaching. We realized that the team teaching could be a very nice idea. So the next step was to try to team teach in uh, uh, some new environment, and that was uh, video conferencing. That's why, actually, we started to work together. Um, one of the first projects that we, were, we worked on was the Invite project. Um, it was our first combined research project with funding coming from the EU. 
It was driven by business needs and of relevance for us is that the funding enabled us to begin our video conference and to move it forward um, in terms of the equipment that we needed and also the collaboration that we needed to get together for. Diverse is uh, a conference and through these and such other conferences we could present our collaborative findings and work as a team. Um, this unified our teaching and learning and gave us an opportunity to host the Diverse Conference in this year. Compact is, um, is a new project um, with EU funding, but specifically for the Czech Republic. Are we out of this this time? Yes, we we'll just pay you. You are not our partners, we we'll just pay you. It's a huge, over 100 plus people involved in course development um, and other things and the leaders are from Masaryk language department so you're it are you yeah. ah, okay um, uh, but why I'm interested is allows us through the funding to collaborate further and to keep on our uh, small university great huge university collaborative um, uh, liaising mm -hmm. okay so that was let's say the introduction about who we are, how we started to work together, uh, <coughs> how it is possible that uh, we uh, could work together and that uh, we hopefully uh, will continue in this. And now we're getting to the second part, probably the most important one, and it is uh, to have a look at uh, video conferencing as such. Uh, <coughs> we will try to have a look at it from a lot of different perspectives. Although we call it video conferencing, you will see that we will talk a lot of different activities around uh, but, well, video conferencing would be the, the central or focal point. Uh, if we should think about the aim of our courses, uh, it is uh, to develop language and communication skills in an intercultural setting in real situations. You will see <coughs> through uh, the seminar that uh, we really tend to uh, push everything towards reality so that we do not have any like acted situations, but a uh, real situation for them. And also the intercultural uh, aspect is very, very important, especially for our <coughs> university, because we are in Central Europe, located, uh, well, it, we are an interior country, so it means that if we get foreigners, they are mostly from uh, surrounding countries or from the east, so we do not, no, we do not get that, uh, let's say, variety of cultures in classes is, is, um, is the situation in Aberystwyth. Yes, so our, both our needs are satisfied really. Yeah. Um, in, this, in terms of style, we wanted um, our classes to become one class. We didn't want one over there, one over there, you talk, you talk, you. we wanted it to be one class, a virtual face-to-face. So we were looking at dispensing with that screen or being able to go beyond the screen and interact two-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. um, the yes. structure? Yes, just before I go to the structure, very important thing here is that uh, most of the tasks are student-driven. Of course, we start with certain input at the beginning and encouragement, but more and more throughout the course, it is uh, students who are actually dictating what is uh, going to happen. And uh, <coughs> now I'm moving to the structure. Uh, we do a uh, really uh, wide, wide range of activities and the structure can be from very traditional lectures to experimental asymmetric sessions. What we mean by asymmetric? Almost everything. <laughs> because, for example, in Aberystwyth, with the students there, they have 20 hours per week of English. Ours have two hours per week. Uh, they have, I mean of English, uh, they have, uh, let's say, very different level of English mm -hmm. than ours. Ours are already with certain, let's say, academic expertise. In Aberystwyth, with their pre-university uh, students, usually. Then, uh, for example, the, the multicultural setting is completely different. In Aberystwyth, with everybody is in English well speaking environment in very intercultural setting in Brno it is a completely different situation so this asymmetry is so different also the institutions are very different mm -hmm. and uh, we would just like to show you that despite all those differences it is not that complicated not that difficult to uh, create a course that works and that uh, can be fruitful for both ends and uh, <coughs> then within that structure 
we divide our activities <coughs> into two uh, bigger branches. One of them is synchronous activities, and <coughs> we will talk about video conferencing, Skyping, and face-to-face -face sessions. And the others are uh, asynchronous activities, and we'll mention emailing, blogging, forums, and Moodle. At this point, it is very important to say that maybe you have noticed some of you uh, who came <coughs> before we uh, started that there was a uh, there was a video conferencing session uh, playing going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we record all the video conferencing sessions, and students can access it online. So you can see this is last year thing. Like this is every other week they had it in the first term and then in the second term every week so whenever they for example miss a class they do not understand something in the class or they need to come back to some discussion or something they can always go back and they can <coughs> see what was going on and that's both ends yeah the, the students in Masaryk students in Abba can all access the online yeah okay and uh, now we will uh, show you a few examples when I said that uh, the diversity of courses is really huge. Then we'll show you a few things uh, that are, well, in our courses or that can appear in our courses. The first one that I'm going to show is a traditional lecture. If you think about traditional lecturing via video conferencing, there are basically two types. The first one is that there is a one teacher at one end lecturing or giving a seminar to students at the other end. Or there can be a teacher at one end with their students at that end plus the students in the other end. Okay? Uh, <coughs> what we are going to show here is uh, work with text. It's about argument of fact. Uh, here the teacher chose the possibility that he, he was showing um, computer, well, uh, the, the presentation mode. Uh, what was well the text was in the computer so you will hear only his voice and here you can see that this is the group of students listening to him now we want to say that that's uh, the quality what you can see here is it's much much lower than in reality I'm sure that those of you who are involved in video conferencing you know that it's like almost face-to-face -face thing if you have these big uh, images of your uh, well colleagues at the other end so and one important yep. aspect is it's turning a private endeavor writing and the students usually have one teacher as the as their audience as their reader into a public domain so everybody is looking at that everybody is having a say on what is happening mm -hmm. now all of this at this stage is what i would now call given information information that you already know. And as we start the next paragraph, this approach to writing below, this is reference to the given information. Now, when I move on to planning argument structures and drafting them, and editing techniques, Okay, I don't think we, can, we need to go on. Simply this is the very traditional, very basic use. But then uh, <coughs> we do a lot of other activities and students typically in our courses they are taught how to give presentations for example. So at the end of uh, certain courses they uh, give their presentations and they can choose what they would like uh, to talk about and how they're going to talk about it. So he, what you will see is that a student who is... Uh, that was Jason. Yeah, Jason from Hong Kong who is giving his presentation has chosen a different style that he was, uh, of course, he wanted to show his PowerPoint presentation, but he also wanted to use his body language. So uh, he just uh, did it in this way. All his pictures were pretty big so we could see everything. Uh, of course, if uh, you have different systems, you can have, like, in one window, the person talking in another window, you can have a presentation... <coughs> going on and in the third window you can have let's say the audience but it, it depends on the systems you are working with our system has um, both our systems have document cameras you can put anything onto it you can put anything onto it press a button and it goes directly to the other venue so that you can have students reading off the same page the, the computer 
um, with one press of a button, it can go to the other venue and you see the computer. Um, Jason didn't want just the computer because usually you can't see his face. So he said, I'm going to do this. So he orchestrated this, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. A huge girl showing her fist to you with words to say MDMA in the middle. Little slimy kids keeping her words. And, and let's see another one. This one, another Hawaii girl looks quite sad, but I don't know why. <laughs> say no drugs. Do you think you can stop the druggies? Well, I don't think so. Okay, so you can see that you can be giving, uh, again, traditional, let's say, PowerPoint presentations to others. Very important is to say that usually once they get used to video conferencing, students, we try to build uh, teams of both ends. That it is not that students at one end would be giving a presentation to students at the other end, but that the team that is going to give the presentation is composed of students of both ends together. So they have to cooperate together to prepare it, to distribute their, let's say, uh, functions, the timing and everything. And uh, then they go like one end, then the other end, one end, then the other end. Well, they simply have to organize it. Uh, Lots of social they, networking yeah, going on yeah. there with the various other uh, yeah. forums. We'll show that Yes, yeah, we'll later. show that later, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, now, very important thing, as we said, that we are uh, late on, we are mostly student-driven. Um, the students can tell us, as teachers, whether they need our help or they don't. So, uh, when they are preparing their activities, it doesn't have to be just presentations, they can prepare anything they like. Just, they just tell us, well, the topic will be like this, and uh, could you do this for us or that for us? Or they can just tell us, uh, well, just... Wait, Wait and see. see. <laughs> so uh, you will just see here two examples. One is when uh, students of Masaryk University prepared an activity for students in Aberystwyth, and you will just see how they start this uh, in the very beginning. But, uh, we have divided you in pairs. So I will be reading your names, and you could sit together so you can discuss the question you will be assigned, okay? Okay. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> is everybody there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. What is missing? Okay. The, the student called Rock is missing. Well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 I will be reading your name and uh, reading the questions for you and showing them to you so you can read them yourself as well. Okay, and uh, then uh, after that you will have like a minute to discuss them or think about them and then we will start uh, discussing them all together. Okay, so you can see that this is not us teachers, uh, well, presenting the things, but it's students. You can see also that it's very important to say that students are very flexible. Wh whenever something doesn't work the way they've prepared, there is no problem for them to say, well, it doesn't matter, we'll do it differently. <laughs> well, we've prepared something, but let's do it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the aspects that's uh, very good uh, for us to know, or that, that mm -hmm. we have the feeling that then we can be uh, quite, well, we have to be flexible, but I mean, we can <laughs> be relaxed that we know that when something doesn't work that the students will say, okay, what shall I do now? I, I will do nothing. No, they will never do that. I, they will always try. Uh, I think an anecdote here is that you you were very um, or you said to me that um, I think it was last year that it's the only class that you teach where the students call you Libor. Oh yeah, yeah. So it does lower any of the the formality and the students become we become part of yeah. what the learning process really. Yeah. It's very important to say that in the Czech Republic uh, we are I think similar to other Central European countries, the teachers are called a very formal way like Mr. Teacher or in my case it would be at university Dr. Stepanek. But, and they would never dare to call me Libo in, in my, well in Czech environment, but once we switch into English, uh, because it's so real and there is Janice, there is Joe, there is, well there was Joe, there is John or somebody else, 
it is quite natural that they simply take the cultural aspect of it and they call me Libor. And then after the session, when they switch into Czech, they go into Dr. Stepanek again because it's a Czech environment. So that's uh, one thing that is very important about the culture, how it influences the reality of the situation, Mm -hmm. the culture. Because when I teach the classes that are formal, well, the the regular face-to-face sessions, they would never think of calling me Libor because it's the Czech setting, Czech group in Czech class, nothing changes. But in video conferencing, the culture changes. Okay? Uh, Another example here, it's (coughs) an example of the feeling of telepresence. We just said at the beginning that we wanted students to see uh, or to to feel that this is one space, one class. But we never realized how easy, again, it is for them to feel this because they were preparing their activities. And one of the activities was... uh, this group uh, was presenting drama therapy, and I didn't know what they had prepared. So <coughs> at one point, they just uh, said this, and we were like both teachers were completely uh, like surprised that it is so easy. And you will see what I'm talking um, about. Well, um, Libor's a little shocked here. He doesn't know what's going on. Do you want us to make space here? Is it just for us or for them as well? No, we we just want to uh, make uh, imagine a circle. So uh, our group will make uh, half of circle, and uh, your group will make second half of circle. So okay. Okay, so it was as easy as that. I mean, you are, well, here, they are there, and if I as a teacher was thinking, well, how to make it real, how to make a circle or something, I would be thinking how to prepare them for it. No, just let's make a circle. We'll be half and you will be another half, and it's as easy as that. And they were doing activities that one person was going after another, and it was really smooth that the last one, and Bruno simply finished her activity, and the first one in Aberystwyth started, I was like in real circle. So it, it's great that uh, we can actually rely on students, that they can come up with any activity, uh, and uh, that's why we say that we feel that almost everything is possible through video conferencing. The only problem is we have to then, as teachers, assess whether it is effective mm-hmm. for our course or for, teach- for uh, language learning or other activities, because many of those things are fun, great fun, and they say it's great, it's cool, it's great fun, but then we have to think, okay, it's good that it is fun, but do you learn? (laughs) Or how much do you learn in in that Mm -hmm. process? Okay. Then I'll just uh, get very fast into the Skype talking. Uh, (coughs) All of us know what Skype is. Uh, We use it for teacher-teacher communication when emailing is not enough. Uh, and we need to discuss something. Students use it, again, in in the normal way. After the sessions, if they need to talk about something, they simply go to Skype or any other uh, desktop video conferencing, and they discuss the things. it's different to video conferencing. Skype, you can see a picture, and it goes over to your computer. It's it's ideal for one talking to one, but one talking to many or many talking to many, it's not an ideal... um, uh, use of technology Um, and we're aware of that so if you're thinking hey wow I could do this with my Skype it it could but it it wouldn't be as interactive it wouldn't be as robust as it would be if you were video conferencing yeah first the quality is much lower then uh, you can hardly produce the sense of that one space there because the the technical um, let's say, uh, solution is somehow different. This is just an example how we use it, simply if we need any experts or specialists uh, coming to our classes and they do not have video conferencing facility, we just use it through Skype, that they are on Skype, and you can see that, well, this is the small group here uh, of our students. It will never be as smooth as in video conferencing, but where you can see the faces in the group, uh, in the class. Okay, it's just... Okay. 
I just, well, all of us know Skype things. So. Yes. Lest you get the idea that I know all about this and I know how to put, put in plugs and do all this and that, that, oh gosh, how do you start that? Don't think that I'm a techie or that even um, Libor is a techie. We're history. not. We're, we, we really are not. We, we, we're trying to understand how best people learn and what best fits that learning environment. Um, and uh, when mistakes happen, when we crash things and, and, and we can't get online, uh, we've, we've rolled with the blows so that we're no longer, well I don't think, are we scared? Well, no. No, not always. Maybe not always. <laughs> um, so we have classes between um, the video conferences, so we have a class um, to prepare for the video conference and then we have our video conference. Yeah. Mainly I think we, we develop because the, the level of student um, understanding is quite uh, uh, less, is, um, is, a, is a lot less actually than, um, than in, in um, the uh, Masaryk University. Um, and when we're giving our in-class, uh, uh, initially the students online were very reticent. They, they, they were, oh wow, and wouldn't speak, and oh look what I look like. And so it, it took away from that one class. So we bought this neat piece of kit. Has, it, has everyone seen a flip? No. This is so easy to use. That, that's it on. You flip at the side there. That tells you you're ready. This then tells you it's filming. And you can say, hello everybody, how are you? And the students can then um, interact with that. They can start and say what they think. And then that comes off and it's simple play it back. And if you want to play it back using the computer or using large screen, it's this. Jam it in there, the students see themselves. So they get that, they get feedback and they can go into tutorials and they can see all this happening. Sorry, Libor. Yeah. Okay, so we're not showing the videos. Okay, so, so maybe we've got some videos of the students uh, because with them because it is such a non-invasive uh, yes. instrument that students easily forget about its presence and then when they see themselves, they can uh, analyse what's going on a bit more easily than if they see themselves on mm -hmm. huge screens and they're just really uh, thinking about the, the, the camera, which is there. Uh, and you can see the students are not really aware that, that, that they're on screen anymore. Mm. Okay, so this would be the synchronous activities we are using in our courses. Now let's move to the asynchronous activities and the first is uh, emailing. Of course we don't have to talk about uh, the fact that we all are using email. This is just two things that we want to say. As teachers you have to be ready for an enormous frequency of emailing within the team teaching, especially in times at the beginning of the course when you have to discuss what actually is going to happen, and then usually before the class and after the class. You can see I just want to show you, the, well, this is two days in, <laughs> in um, November, the 4th and the 5th, okay, and there are 11 messages from Janice, probably 11 from me too, to Janice. So it's just that day when we have a video conference or the day before or the day after when we need to organize everything so as teachers if you are going to use it be ready for this excessive uh, emailing sometimes it is our lifeline it, it's when we we email um, each other and we'll, it's sometimes in a panic what happened today where were your students and um we couldn't get online. Oh yes, someone stole one of the computers so they locked us out and we couldn't get in. That's okay. why you couldn't yeah. get hold of us today. So all these kind of things are emailed and we keep them and we use them as our research to take it on to say what should we do in the case of. So the, uh, emails are a very, very important part yeah. of our course. Yeah. And we can also, for example, check what were we doing last year this time? Mm -hmm. Are we at the similar stage or are we doing completely different things? So this is about teachers, about students. We can't say what's going on, when, whether they email or not. If they email, it's good, but we do not know anything about it. And because we would like to know what they do, sometimes we also need to evaluate their um, writing skills. So uh, we needed a different... Uh, space or different environment 
and we started to experiment with blogs. So as you can see, the blogs were, we were using in uh, 2006 and 2007. It has certain advantages and certain disadvantages. Yes. Um, one of the, one of the uh, uh, advantages were, was that the students were, were reacting and uh, interacting with each other. Um, it was um, they set up their own blog and they started to um, use it to uh, formally and informally to uh, for things that we had asked them to do and also for, to hash around I guess um, and um, it was it was the informal formal that really was problematic for us I think yes yes the problem was that uh, for example we set a task or something. And or they were to write something which is meant to be formal, and then immediately they, for example, switched into uh, where is it? Yes, pictures of Thai food. And you, as a teacher, you were simply looking for the things which were like the task they were uh, su that the students were supposed to do. But uh, of course, you didn't mind this these activities, but. Uh, we wanted a more organised space. We needed to assess. Yeah, we needed yeah. to use that as an assessment tool and it wasn't really happening. Yeah, that was one thing. Another thing is that blogging is not meant uh, a tool for group communication at one time. So, for example, after a session, when students got all of them and logged in, well, the blog didn't accept it. So, so it collapsed and all the students were writing, well, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And we just logged in a few hours later and said, no, it works, everything is okay. It's only when there are, I don't know, 20 or 15 people or 30 getting in there. And it was a public domain, meaning that anyone could react to it. So it yep. was really hard work getting through to find out what we needed to, to assess the students. Yep. So that's why we uh, started to use uh, forums, uh, which was... Uh, an improvement in that way that so in that respect that we definitely knew what was for us and what was like not for board? us. Is that like yes. blackboard? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, well, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> 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 definitely at this point it was, for example, when uh, summary writing was assigned, I knew when I entered this thread I could see that uh, students were writing their paragraphs, summaries of the discussion. Uh, I knew that I didn't have to get into that thread because, well, party, they are organizing a party, it's great, but I, I don't have to be involved. Also, but what we found was very good that, as we said at the beginning, in video conferencing, we do not deal only with video conferencing, but our aim was to develop all the communication skills. And we realized that all those students are using all those communication tools, they may not be effective in using them. And we could see that, for example, this is a group uh, comparing fairy tales in different cultures, and we could see what different <coughs> students did. We asked them, or we told them, that if they want us, before their presentation, to know, well, if they want us to know something, they can post all those materials there, and we will read it before the session, and they can uh, rely on the fact that we know about it. So some of the students, for example, sent just a, well, just a Georgian tale so that we would uh, read that and well, that would be enough. But others, for example, would produce this. Okay. <laughs> so then when we analyze that, we said, so, uh, how, well, do you think that students would simply sit before your presentation and go through all of those links to watch all of those fairy tales that are accessible online. Was that a realistic uh, well, situation? Then, of course, after the analysis, uh, she realized that, yes, this is that is why nobody actually got to those links, because, yeah, that's what students do. And we could also see a very good example here, for example, Masahiro and, and his Japanese um, fairy tales. There is a very short introduction of the characteristics, very short a uh, fairy tale and two links. Simply very realistic. Yes, students read it, students knew everything, what they needed to know. So it was also very good for the analysis that the students could look at, okay, this works. Everybody was reading this, but nobody was going into those hundreds and hundreds of links. Okay, so that was um, very good. Also, we use it, and I'm not going to get in there now, uh, 
With forums, you can use it in more advanced tasks like peer reviews. For example, that they have, uh, their, we use it with postgraduates when they read their texts uh, or abstracts and then the others peer review and comment on that. So the forums prove to be very good, but there is one big but. but. In forums, you need administrator because it is not just you as a teacher who could be administrating the thing. Well, you could, but it's a completely different kind of work. So, the first thing was about, uh, uh, well, uh, our administrator was funded from the project. The Masaryk University Forum is funded by the Masaryk University, so it's no problem. But we needed, again, something more complex. And that's why we tried, and it was last year, we tried uh, virtual learning environment Moodle. I don't know if... Uh, yeah, five minutes, thank you. <laughs> uh, that uh, some of you may know. What it uh, enabled, let's say, oh, sorry, uh, was a wide range of activities. Uh, could you just say a few things I'll get in yeah. there? Um, yeah, the, the um, Moodle also needed an administrator, but it, it, was, it was more organised, it was more teacher-friendly, so that we could get in and we could have a look at what the students were doing. They could interact with it, they could, um, they could um, add things that, or they, we, they, could be, they could go to um, some of the uh, assignments, they could go to um, getting to know your place, they could go to um, some of the lectures that we had uh -huh. with Geert Hofstetter and culture and stereotypes, and they could go in there and interact mm -hmm. with those, so it yeah. was really good. Unfortunately, Aberystwyth had a bit of a meltdown with its computers and they're putting an enormous firewall. So at the moment, we have to send everything to Libor and he has to put it on, which is a bit unfortunate, yeah. but I still prefer it. Yeah. I still yeah. prefer it to any of the other social networking things that we've had. So, for example, what we do more than in the forums, we can say that it is uh, wiki activities or web quests and other things. But those of you who know these virtual learning environments know that, well, there are a lot of more activities we can we can use okay so you can see from all the things that we do that that, that the video conference is not is not a standalone it's not something that is video conferencing it's it's all intertwined and fluid with all the other social networking tools it can't it, it just can't be on its own without your email it can't be without a forum so the students can be in touch after so all that goes together to make some a whole out of the the experience of of sharing and and having a virtual classroom mm -hmm. and uh, if you ask what students think about it most of them are, or most of the feedback is is really positive. Usually at the beginning all of them are very um, conscious about uh, their looks, <laughs> <laughs> mostly. Then uh, sometimes you can see that they're complaining about the uh, shortage of time they, uh, they have uh, f for their speaking, talking sometimes. Usually later on they, they, they just think, okay, teachers, just leave. We can do it our ourselves and we can just enjoy it and we don't need you at all. <laughs> but uh, mostly, when what what is positive that it is a lot of things about uh, those cultural differences. They share ideas, then compare cultures, and it is very much well important, really, for for Masaryk University. But also, sometimes they say, uh, yes, it's very good that we talk and mm -hmm. write in our let's say informal environment. But it is uh, well even a the, high level yeah, of English. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, it, it's been for the first time, let's say last year, when they were saying, well, at, it will actually be very good for our CVs, that we have this skill, that we can, uh, that we can video conference. Because we didn't say that they actually go and they, head, uh, they, they run the video conference, their yeah. um, training, and then they, they invite people to produce the video conference mm -hmm. and to participate. So they do get practical yeah. info. Yeah. So... Uh, this is more or less it. We wanted to share the, the wide range of activities we've, uh, well, we've been working on. And uh, if you are interested, you can, of course, ask many questions. We can go into, we can go into detail in any aspect of this. Uh, just one last comment is uh, about future ideas. 
Yes, um, we have. We're, we're in contact through Diverse and through the various um, tech uh, educational um, uh, uh, conferences. We're in touch with more people, and we're going to try and move out of just the two of us. I think you've already done that. Yep, You're in yep. Quebec already, yep. aren't you? Yep. And so these, the, the, we're going into other places to to get other places mm -hmm. online. So that's something that we're doing, to, and uh, particularly through Diverse. Um, for um, the video uh, conference setup in Japan, Korea, and China, where a lot of our students come from, we'd love to video conference, especially for students coming in, what do they need to know, what do they need, how can we ease them in, um, but the, uh, the time difference is becoming a, a huge problem. What we've tried with time difference, like workable time difference, is nine hours is the maximum we tried, because it's like a big, well, morning, nine-ish, uh, in that one zone, and let's say seven uh, in the afternoon, well, in, in the evening, in the other zone. For example, in our country, seven o'clock in the in the evening is still okay for having a class, so uh, that the nine hours difference is not a terrible problem. Well, we hope our passion has um, transferred into you, and that, that um, it was it was transparent that we're very excited about this, and that you will also <laughs> catch the bug and want to do it. Anything Thank you else? Very much.